Welcome to the Literary Digest. Please subscribe to the channel or give a like and comment on this video if you find it helpful to help us reach more people. If your sales strategy were a soup, would it be a finely seasoned gourmet dish or a bland broth? If you said the latter, then this summary is just what you need to add some spice to your approach and cook up a strategy that puts you in the top performer spotlight. This guide will walk you through the seven basic steps of selling, from drumming up leads to sealing the deal. Whether you're already a savvy sales shark or just getting your feet wet, strap in. This is an adventure that's going to revolutionize your sales tactics. Are you ready to flip those daunting no's to delightful yes and transform casual leads into dedicated customers? Let's dive in. Step 1. Looking for Potential Buyers Prospecting, or the act of looking for potential buyers, can be as daunting as trying to get a barista's attention during the morning rush. But if you don't speak up, you won't get your coffee or your leads. The best salespeople understand that taking the initiative is crucial to maintaining a full pipeline. You might find prospecting nerve-wracking, but passively waiting for leads is a guaranteed path to failure. By actively seeking prospects, you're already ahead of your peers. Here are five techniques you can use to generate leads and boost your business. First, consider the itch cycle. This involves recognizing when customers are likely to feel ready for a new purchase. Timing your follow-ups with this cycle can be highly effective. Second, capitalize on technical advancements. Reach out to current and potential customers when there are new developments in your product line. This can spark excitement and interest in upgrading. Third, engage in claim staking. Stake your claim on organizations by becoming active in them. Building relationships in these settings positions you well for future opportunities with potential clients. Fourth, create a swap meet or leads club with complementary, non-competing salespeople. Exchanging potential client information can be mutually beneficial. Fifth, penetrate the community. Participate in local events. This not only helps you meet potential clients but also contributes to your community. By implementing these strategies, you'll enhance your prospecting efforts and stay ahead in the competitive sales landscape. Step 2. Making a good first impression in-store When a promising lead walks into your store, it's your instinct to jump on them and start pitching your products like your life depends on it. They nod politely, but in their heads, they're plotting their escape. Before you know it, they're making a mad dash for the door. That's one of the biggest blunders you can make as a salesperson. Instead of overwhelming your potential leads and scaring them off, focus on making a positive first impression and helping them feel at ease. Your priority should be to eliminate their apprehensions and create a relaxed atmosphere. When you meet new prospects, start with a genuine smile and make eye contact. Greet them properly and avoid rushing into a handshake, as this might make some people uncomfortable. After the initial contact, give them space. Step back and let them browse your store freely. If prospects show genuine interest in a product, they'll typically linger on it for about a minute. This is your cue to approach them with an opening involvement question. For example, if they're looking at phones, ask, are you upgrading your current phone, or is this going to be a second device for you? Your goal is to get them talking about why they want the product, so you can proceed with making the sale. Initially, you may feel conflicted about not eagerly helping a client the moment you see them. But it's actually beneficial to focus on making people feel comfortable and respected first. That way, you significantly increase the chances of a successful sale and repeat business. Step 3. Qualifying Your Prospects Imagine you're at a party, chatting away, only to realize you've been trying to impress the coat rack. Salespeople often make a similar mistake, wasting too much time convincing the wrong people and making little to no earnings. To steer clear of this pitfall, make sure you always qualify your prospects. 
Qualifying prospects is about identifying whether they have the needs and resources to buy your product or service. This crucial step should be done before diving into a full-blown presentation, saving you from expending valuable time and energy on unlikely buyers. By focusing on those more inclined to become paying customers, you enhance your efficiency and boost your sales success. To qualify your prospects, start by identifying which products or services they currently use and what they appreciate about them. This initial step helps you assess if your product aligns with their needs. For instance, if you're selling high-speed boats, a prospect who values seaworthiness over speed is not your target. Next, ask what they'd like improved in a new product. This insight allows you to tailor your presentation to highlight these aspects. It's also important to ensure that you're talking to the actual decision maker and to assess their readiness to make a purchase soon. Once you've qualified your prospects, present options in a way that guides them towards a decision. Use the triplicate of choice technique where you offer three options for both product and price. For the product, limit choices to the three that best meet their needs. For pricing, present three tiers, a high range, a middle option most people choose, and the actual price as the lowest tier. This often leads prospects to opt for the middle choice. You can then surprise them by offering a solution that meets their needs at a lower price than they expected. However, when discussing pricing, precision is key. Avoid hesitations and vagueness. Present your pricing structure with confidence to maintain control over the money conversation. In the end, don't get stuck presenting to the wrong crowd. Qualify your prospects to ensure your time is spent on those who matter. Step 4. Presenting your product effectively. This is the moment of truth. You've qualified your lead, now it's time to deliver a presentation that eliminates any doubts and proves you're the solution they need. In sales, effective presentations are crucial because they're ultimately about closing the deal, not just delivering information. To create an unbeatable presentation, the first step is to plan it in writing. This step is non-negotiable. Draft your entire presentation, anticipate potential objections, and prepare responses to any questions your clients might throw at you. Knowing your audience is just as crucial. Understand where they are now and where they aspire to be. When you're in the room, begin by clearly stating your purpose. Expand on your introduction, then reiterate your main points. Repetition is your ally in ensuring your message sticks. Control the narrative with questions and use compelling, relatable language and jargon that resonates with your audience. Incorporate visual aids to keep your audience engaged. Testimonial letters, brochures, videos, and models not only enrich your presentation but also help you convey more information efficiently. Use these tools to manage the flow and keep your audience's attention. Position yourself to maintain eye contact and make notes while they focus on the visuals. Keep your presentation concise, ideally under 17 minutes, to ensure you hold their concentration. Your materials should also be immaculately clean and crisp their condition reflects on you and your company. Lastly, ensure your clients are actively involved throughout. Rather than just speaking at them and putting on a one-person show, have them interact with your product or calculate the benefits of your service. This hands-on approach keeps them engaged and continuously thinking about what you're offering. If all goes well, your presentation will capture the client's interest. Now, it's time to drive your message home. Step 5. Managing Rejections and Objections Ever feel like your sales pitch is a relentless game of whack-a-mole, with rejections and objections constantly surfacing? The frustration builds until you just want to put the mallet down. But it doesn't have to be that way. Mastering the art of handling these negative reactions can transform your approach, leaving you grinning all the way to the bank. First, let's address rejections, the unequivocal numbers. Rejection in sales can be seen in a positive light by calculating its monetary value. 
If you earn $100 per sale and need to contact 10 people to secure one sale, each contact is effectively worth $10. This mindset turns rejections into potential earnings rather than setbacks. Embracing the following five key attitudes can also lessen the sting of rejection. Consider rejections a learning opportunity, feedback for improvement, a chance to develop your humor, an opportunity for practice, and a necessary step in the sales process. As you shift your perspective, you can welcome rejection as a tool for growth. Next, let's tackle objections. Objections are simply requests for more information, indicating that potential clients are interested in contemplating a purchase. Instead of dreading objections, view them as gateways to closing a deal. Employ specific techniques to overcome these hurdles. For example, shift the conversation from minor concerns to major benefits, or keep probing until you uncover the real objection, then address it directly. Handling objections effectively involves the six-step process. Listen to the objection completely, restate it to the client, question it for clarity, respond effectively, confirm the client accepts your answer, then proceed to the next step in your sales sequence. Remember, as you navigate client objections, do so without arguing or being confrontational. Rejections and objections don't have to derail your sales efforts. Equip yourself with the right mindset and techniques, and you'll find yourself closing more deals and facing fewer frustrations. Step 6. Sealing the Deal Picture a gardener who meticulously nurtures every plant, ensuring they thrive through each growth stage. Yet, when the fruits are ripe for the picking, they walk away, leaving the harvest to wither. This mirrors the fate of many sales professionals who excel at cultivating leads and building relationships but falter when it's time to close the deal. Knowing exactly when and how to seal that deal is what separates a good salesperson from a great one. Closing is the vital final step in sales, when you guide potential customers to make a purchase decision. The process begins during your presentation, where you need to stay vigilant for buying signals. These cues can be verbal, such as the prospect asking more questions, or visual, like a smile or heightened interest in another demonstration. Once you identify these signals, transition confidently into your closing sequence, starting with a test close. A test close is a strategic question or statement designed to gauge the prospect's readiness to buy. This step allows you to decide when to proceed with a final closing attempt. One effective method is the alternate advance close, where you offer the client two choices, subtly steering them towards a decision. For example, you might ask if they would use the product in the office or warehouse, or whether the 5th or the 20th of the month would be a better delivery date. Another test close technique is the porcupine close, where you respond to a client's question with another question to confirm their interest. After a successful test close, move on to the final closing techniques. Top salespeople often use around five techniques before achieving success, so mastering multiple closing methods is essential. There are several types of close you can use in most industries. The basic written close involves filling out an order form during the presentation, creating a sense of commitment. The Ben Franklin Balance Sheet Close helps prospects weigh the pros and cons of buying, while the reduction to the ridiculous close justifies large investment costs by breaking them down into smaller daily amounts. The Puppy Dog Close leverages the customer's attachment to a product they've tried, and the similar situation close uses success stories from other clients to build credibility. The I Can Get It Cheaper Close addresses the trade-offs of opting for a competitor's lower price. When transitioning between closing attempts, start by apologizing if you've been too pushy, summarize the agreed-upon benefits, and pose a lead-in question. Then, reassess the situation and apply different closing strategies to increase your chances of sealing the deal. Your ability to close effectively can make or break a sale. Don't be the gardener who leaves ripe fruits unpicked, master the art of closing and reap the rewards of your hard work. Step 7. Handling Referrals After the adrenaline rush of closing a sale, it's tempting to sit back and relax. But what if the real opportunity begins after the handshake? 
When your clients are happy with your stellar product or service, they're primed to send more business your way. This is exactly how you can double your success without doubling your effort. Referrals are the golden ticket in sales. They're easier to close, take less time, and have a much higher success rate compared to other leads. To generate these valuable leads, it's crucial to approach the process strategically. Begin setting the stage early in your relationship with the customer by mentioning that your business thrives on word-of-mouth recommendations. Once the sale is finalized and your customers are excited about their purchase, remind them of their earlier commitment to provide referrals. This is where you'll employ the card referral system. Help your customers identify small groups of people they know who could benefit from the same product or service. These might be work colleagues, club members, or sports teammates. Jot these names down on index cards and ask qualifying questions to understand why each person came to mind. If possible, have your customer make an introductory call. If they're hesitant, ask for permission to use their name when you reach out to the relevant group or business. Implementing this system requires practice and preparation. You must remain casual and non-threatening throughout the process. After all, the end goal is to turn satisfied customers into a network of new opportunities. Leverage your happy clients to expand your business. Final Summary In this summary to How to Master the Art of Selling by Tom Hopkins, you've learned that honing your skills and the fundamentals of sales can dramatically improve your success rate. From prospecting to closing deals, every step in the sales process is crucial. Remember, sales isn't just about pitching products, it's about building relationships, understanding needs, and providing solutions. As you perfect these skills, you'll transform from a bland and anxious conversationalist to a sales superstar. So, the next time you're faced with a tough prospect, don't sweat it. Take a deep breath, remember these basics, and dive in. After all, in sales, as in life, it's not about how many times you get knocked down but how many times you get back up and close that deal. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe to the Literary Digest for more videos like this one. And don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what you found most helpful. Until next time, Keep striving for success.